equals our creep player ID. You can also make a function to get creep player ID. I'm actually going to do that because here I'm accessing a variable outside of this spawner folder. So I'm going to add functions here. We're going to add this and we're going to add a function. Spawner get creep player ID. Return type is what you're going to, this function is going to return. In this case, it's an integer. You will see here an option that says function. Parameters, we don't need any. And here, turns the ID. The creeps. Creep owner. And there we have a return. This is how you send stuff back from functions. You go to return. And then you send, select the variable you want to send back. In this case, the creep player ID. This is a very simple function. But now, if we go to our move unit here and double click here, look under general, uh, functions, general, you'll see we have get creep player ID. Uh, sometimes you might not see your function showing up here. That's usually because you have uh, set the wrong return type in the function, in this case, integer. Uh, the editor is quite smart, so when you, in this case, since I set it to integer, when I go here, it only shows my integer va variables. And the same thing here, since the first part of this compare is an integer, it will only show, show functions that return integers here. So don't get confused if something isn't showing up. Alright, so if a unit enters spawns and this unit is owned by our creep player, we will simply issue order to the unit, to the triggering unit, order, targeting point, build the command move, so we're going to order the unit to move, point is going to be center of region, since the finish actually has nothing to do with the actual spawning, I'm not going to put that in here. The finish is part of the other game logic, so I'm just going to access it directly. Replace existing orders. This is fine. I will now order the unit to move. We obviously need a kill unit trigger. This is also where you can subtract lives and so on. I'm actually just going to duplicate move unit and call it kill unit. Any unit enters finish. It's of the creep player. We simply kill unit, triggering unit. Final thing I'm going to implement is start next level. Uh, for this, I'm going to need a new function here. Spawner get final level number turns the final level. Return type is going to be integer. No parameters. Once again, very simple function. Just return. The value is going to be our uh, total waves. All right. So start next level in here. I'm just going to make it a uh, periodic event for this one. You can make this more complex. You could use a uh, more complex system. I've done so in my own tower defense map. I'm going to... I'll probably link up my own map as well with this video so that you can have a chance to look at it. Anyway, I'm just going to run this every one second. And here, I'm going to check if the nulls... Uh, we obviously need one more, get current number, so number of the, you could also uh, just make a function with returning true or false, that would be is player finished or something, but current wave, so if Uh, what am I doing? Variable. Uh, current. 
<sighs> Get current level number. Is let's think how this works so we don't make a mistake here. No. Uh, it's equal to once again the function. Get final level number. I just have to go into the spawn wave, spawn next wave here. I forgot something. After we spawn it, we obviously need to. Um, Actually, we're going to do it before we spawn it. We need to increase the level number. The current wave. Oops. Um, this should be players. And the current wave should be an array because we need it for players. You'll see here I mess up and I change it as I go along here. Uh, sorry, I did not actually prepare something for this. I'm just doing it out of memory for my own tower defense. So I will be going a bit back and forth here, but you'll hopefully get a feel for how it's done. And player ID. Why am I using set variable? I could use modify variable. It's been a while since I worked in the editor. Now I had a break, so let's do modify variable instead. Um, current wave. There we go. Sorry, it took me a while. Plus one. All right. Then we need to start current wave at zero, since it's going to increase it before the level spawns. That way, when you come in here. Before we start the next level, it will not be, this will not be true, these will not be equal. But after the final level, uh, these will end up being equal. So then this, you beat the game, woo. And then we're going to disable this trigger, disable trigger. There should be a disabled trigger here. Trigger. Mm, turn trigger on off. There we go. Current trigger, set it off. As we will keep getting this message every one second. If we're not at the final wave, all we need to do is spawn X wave. And we need to pass in our player ID. In this case, you might. Um, actually, we also need to check that the current wave is done. So to do that, I'm going to go into the here, and I'm going to add a new region. Since this is player's ones area, I'm just going to add the region all around it. And region properties, players, zero, one, play area. Back in the trigger editor. We're going to count the amount of units, so number of units in unit group. Unit group is going to be matching condition, units in region, matching condition. Any unit type, region is going to be our uh, play area. Player is going to be our get creep player ID. And the amount, if that equals zero, that means we killed all the units in the wave. Then we're just going to spawn the next wave for player one. Usually you would loop through all the players, check each play area. You would probably put up an array with each play area and so on. But this, is, this part of the system is not part of my tutorial. We are just focusing on the actual spawning system here. So yeah. Now this map should be playable. It will start spawning right away. You might want to delay or something, enable this trigger after a while, use a different system. In my map, I actually don't use any trigger like this. I have a button that starts it, and it starts its own set of triggers. So, and I think I trigger my next wave based on unit dice event. But we're making it 